Hello everyone, this is Wrecker, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you guys another PvP build video. Uh, now this is a real special one uh, because uh, we are able to gain all three vital roles, uh, which is survivability, damage and also immunity from all hazardous effects uh, in all in one build. Uh, so we have 100% immunity from uh, you know having hazard protection 100% uh, we are outputting insane amount of damage uh, our primary weapon is sitting at 20.1k which is the rail splitter uh, and also we have almost over 550k health pool to go with which is insanely good all of these three things in one build uh, but yes, we are not running any utility at all because we don't need that But still we are running double heals uh, Without any yellows at all With ease. All right, so let's get started with the build Okay, so this is the build everyone to give you a general start before we jump in uh, we are sitting at 483.9k armor 79.8k health uh, we have 10 offensive, 13 defensive, and 0 utility. Now, uh, as for the specialization, we are using the survivalist uh, because of two reasons only. One is the better seeker mine, and second is the med kit, which not only helps you, but helps your teammates as well. Uh, no matter if you're running in dark zone or conflict, it helps your teammates a lot. Both the skills actually, Mender Seeker Mine and the Med Kit helps your teammates as well, not only you, which works perfect. Anyhow, uh, going up to the weapons, I am running a named weapon, the Rail Splitter. Now this is a very special one because it is almost got rolled. Uh, let me real quick uh, turn on the base damage to show you guys what numbers are we running. Uh, this one, I picked it up from the Thieves Den vendor for I think about a week ago, it was available and it's sitting at 11,471 uh, by default. Uh, now I don't, uh, I'm not sure entirely but I think the max cap for the rail splitter is, uh, is around 11,600. So we are only short about, you know, 130 or so, so which is insanely good. Now as a, as a total with our build, we are sitting at 20.1k, 990 RPM and a mag of 50. Now as for the talents, uh, obviously we are running perfectly measured. The top half of the magazine has 20% rate of fire and negative 10% weapon damage. The bottom half of the magazine has negative 15% rate of fire and 30% total weapon damage. Now this is uh, where this weapon shines uh, insanely good uh, because you will be beaming out players uh, it's, it's, it's insanely good because I have been using this weapon uh, from quite a while now and uh, I'm not sure about other weapons running measured uh, it doesn't feel very good but with this one since uh, we are sitting at just under 1000 rpm the rate of fire it, it you wouldn't have even feel that uh, it's taking away any weapon damage or rate of fire from your weapon it's so good it works so well and we have put in allegro now i much recommend that you put in allegro with it do not use extra or any other uh talent because if you see if you go by the numbers uh the measured uh, the perfectly measured Talent is taken away minus 15% rate of fire from you, but if you add Allegro onto it You're only gonna use 5% which is nothing you wouldn't even feel that Anyhow as for the bottom talent we have recharge which yes helps us out insanely good because the skills that we are running the mender seeker mine and the destroyer hive they both do need plus 20% duration and charges so which is insanely good 
As for the secondary, I'm using Merciless. Uh, there is no surprise there, nothing special, obviously for the bottom talent to proc Spark on our backpack. As for the sidearm, I'm using a D50, nothing special, just for protected reload. But you can run any other talent that you like. Now jumping onto the build, uh, the mask that we're running, it's a Fenris mask. The, the reason why I'm running a Fenris mask because this is the only spot I could fit in the best, uh, you know, just to gain that 10% assault rifle damage by default. But you can run it any other way. Uh, as you like, but this is how I run it and it works perfectly fine. And we have one red, one blue, we have 6.5% critical hit chance and I have rolled 50% hazard protection on it. Uh, now when it comes to hazard protection in this build, we are not using a hollow man mask, so we have to gain hazard protection some other way. So 50% from the mask and the remaining 50 we will be gaining from the gila bonus and the knee pads talents that we're running which i will show you later anyhow uh now before i move on from the mask this is not a critical hit chance build but still we are sitting over 30 percent critical hit chance along with all that damage that we are gaining on our primary weapon which is insanely good so when it procs it beams the enemies so hard that they wouldn't know that what's going on uh the funny thing is in fact i was playing conflict yesterday and the other team uh started calling me a cheater they thought that i was cheating because i was beaming them so fast they i was taking off their armor so fast that they wouldn't even realize that what's going on we were rolling 500k armor and i was still able to face tank them without any issues at all now trust me i will confirm this with the gameplay i'm not uh exaggerating at all it works insanely good i have been face tanking all kinds of builds with this one and never had any failures at all unless someone is running uh you know a really really good uh clutch build now not only a simple one they have they must you know run a really good clutch build maybe with a perfect clutch or something uh, then maybe they're able to face tank you better than you but I haven't been having any issues at all so far anyhow uh, moving on uh, the as for the talent I'm running concussion which needs seven or more offensive and we have plenty of uh, you know reds uh, to go with so it's not, not an issue uh, the second piece that I'm running then that's the first piece for the gila we're running uh, now, d before I jump in for the gila pieces, it's not mandatory to run three gila pieces in this one uh, because the third bonus talent that we're getting, 15% uh, pulse skill power, that's not what we need. We don't need that at all. But the reason why I'm running is this way is because the third piece, uh, the knee pads, is giving us more blues than any other uh, knee pad can give us. So that's the only reason I'm running it. Anyhow, uh, we have two blues, one red. Uh, I have rolled 25% total armor. Then we have 15,168 armor. And then we also have 8% weapon damage. Now this is a real good uh, chest piece that I came across. Now I know that the armor, the raw armor on a chest piece can be, uh, you know, way higher than this. We can go, I, I even myself have uh, uh, chest pieces with 40 or 45,000 armor on them already but those pieces do not come with this high weapon damage with them so that's the only reason I'm running it because uh, I don't need much armor uh, you know in addition anyways so this this works good as for the talents no surprise I'm running bloodsucker which I would recommend running it because this works insanely good with this amount of armor, you will be gaining more armor each time you deplete an enemy's armor. So that's insanely good. Now this chest piece comes with two blues, one red. You can stack with your best mods. Uh, now again, as always, I recommend that you, when it comes to blue mods, when it comes to PvP, you always run explosive resistance and total armor percentage to push your armor as high as you can. 
Anyhow, uh, going to the second uh, gilla piece that we're running, it's a backpack. We have two blues, one red, 11,304 armor, 20.5% total armor, and then we have 6.5% critical hit chance. Now again, this is not a crit build, but again, the amount of crits that we are getting from this build, along with that raw weapon damage, when it crits, it beams your enemies so fast that it, it works insanely good. It all synergizes with the build overall, uh, which I will show you later on in the stats and also in the gameplay. You will see that. Uh, now moving on to the talents, I'm running Hardened and Spark, which are the two talents I would say are must have to push your armor as higher as you could with Spark, which is a must have, obviously. Now as for the mod slots, we have one red, one blue, which you can stack with your best mods, which you have. Now going on to the third gilla piece that I'm running, it's an e-pad. I have rolled 11% total armor on it. And this talents, this is very mandatory because again we are non not running a hollow man mask. So this is mandatory, it's called insulated, it will give you 30% hazard protection. So in total, 30 from this talent. 20% from the gilla bonuses and 50% from your mask that we rolled. We are sitting at 100% hazard protection. So that's out of the way. Cool. Uh, as for the mod slots, again, gilla knee pads comes with two blues, which I have stacked with my best armor mods that I could find uh, with some explosive resistance, which is always good to have and PvP. Now, uh, lastly, coming to the two uh, true Patriot uh, gear pieces that we're running for the bonus of 10% total armor. Now, it's not only that, but uh, True Patriot gives us uh, a bunch of reds, uh, which helps us to gain weapon damage uh, for any primary weapon that we're running, you know. So, for this one, for the gloves, we have one red, one blue. I have rolled 13% assault rifle damage. And then we have 11,031 health on it. It does come with a red mod slot, which you can stack with your best damage mods. Uh, coming to the very last piece, the True Patriot Holster. Uh, nothing special there. Uh, we have one red, one blue. We have 7.5% critical hit chance. And 40,925 health. Now this can go higher than that. I didn't even look into it. I do have uh, higher health. Uh, attributes in my stash so maybe I'll roll them over and this build could go even better uh, what else would we need uh, anyhow um, it does come with two red mod slots which I have stacked again with my best weapon mods now uh, coming on to the skills before I show you the stats again I'm running double heals one is the seeker mentor mine which comes from the survivalist you do not need any utility at all I'm running uh, the default uh, mods, which comes from the specialization, 50% healing, and 80% skill haste. And uh, my, you know, whenever I uh, uh, destroy my Mender Seeker mine, it comes back within 14 seconds, which is insanely good. And even if you don't, it still comes back in 33 seconds. So that's insanely good. Now, as for the second heal skill that we're running that's the restorer high uh, now again i'm not running any mods at all because we don't have any yellows but still this heals you and your allies insanely good when you put that in the ground so which you will see in the gameplay at the end of it anyhow uh this is the build everyone now as for the grenade that's a no-brainer always go with concussion grenade in pvp because that helps you out taking out your enemies if you have downed them far away and you're not able to reach them. So that's always helpful unless you're running some kind of status effect uh, talent on your build or on your weapon, uh, like maybe burning or bleed effect, then yes, you can run the other grenades if you like, uh, the incendiary or maybe the fragmentation grenade, which you can help uh, with the bleed effect. Anyhow, but for my go-to, that's a concussion, it helps a lot. Now, before we wrap it up, let me show you the stats. Uh, all the talents on the weapons are active. We are sitting at 
13,800 PvP weapon damage. We have 30.5% critical hit chance, 25% critical hit damage, 55% headshot damage. And then we are sitting at 15% all weapon damage bonus. And then we are sitting at a perfect 60% assault rifle damage, which is insanely good. Now coming down to the bottom, all the talent center gear pieces are active. Again, we are sitting at 483, 864 armor, 79, 801 health, 39, 901 health regeneration. And then lastly, look at this, we are sitting at a perfect 100% hazard protection. So I don't even have to worry about any hazard effects, any incendiary grenades, any burn effects, any bleed effects, nothing at all. I can just walk through them without an ease. Anyhow. So this is the build everyone now again I did see in the you know in the news that this hazard protection thing is getting a nerf so we might not be able to get a hundred percent hazard protection in the future updates but that's another thing for another day for now this build works insanely good I have been face tanking people all day long and they it, it's only like nine it's only one out of ten you know that they were able to face tank me uh, in the result of downing me so it's it works insanely good I didn't even know that this weapon the rail splitter could output this much uh, you know amount of damage within a few seconds like two or three seconds uh, that people started calling me a cheater uh, which is which is quite funny actually uh, anyhow this is the build everyone uh, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, I hope you guys like the build uh, I'll see you in the next one enjoy the gameplay thank you
allies are acquiring the boost. The boost has been taken by allies.